Hey guys, my name is Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net. Welcome to this video on reharmonization, uh, which will be a way to teach you and to give you a quick and dirty introduction, like a, a crash course on how we can substitute chords for one another. And that's a term that we use in jazz, we say reharmonization. Now, this is a really basic introductory video. Uh, th this is not like a, a theory class or a treatise on harmony, and it's not it's not rocket science, it's not supposed to be a math lecture, it's not to, supposed to be physics. We're gonna get really hands-on on the guitar to see what you can do with that. Okay, the concept behind harmonization is we, we know we could substitute a chord. If you have a song that you are playing an E chord on, like a good old E, you know you could keep playing the same tune and at that point replace it with a different chord, uh, say an A chord that I just played with different uh, intent or effects, uh, maybe a good effect, maybe a not so good effect, and that becomes where we have the art and science of substituting chords. There are rules of harmony, which we're not getting into right now, which will say, well, when we're on a certain chord, there are certain effects we can achieve by moving to another chord. That's all that is really, even if we look at longer progressions of like eight bars or 16 bars, like a standard like this, well, it's, pretty much always a case of knowing what key you're in and then where we're headed next and where we came from. So a lot of this context dictates. However, in this video, I want to do a really guitar-oriented, guitar-friendly approach to looking at what else is there. So I want to pick one note that I sort of picked at random. It's a D note. So this is the third fret on the second string, which I was performing the in the introduction of this video. I was just sort of riffing on it and hearing that note. So one of the best ways to get started with this is to look at a substitute chord around a single top note. I'll give you an example. That's gonna be pretty uh, easy to digest for you just now. So what if we have a C9 chord, right? A, a dominant. Let's put this on the screen. And instead of that, I will play a G chord with that top note, like a G cowboy G. So we notice that what happens is, what I like to do is keep the melody note the same and then evolve what the chord will be. So in this case, now we had a C9 or C dominant seven with a ninth, and the other case was a plain G, just a G cowboy. So we see that it will achieve a different effect and that top note will become um, different, even if it's the same, right? So it's the same, but it's different. So that's what I, I like to play around with to start to hear new things. And for the rest of this, of this video, guys, there's just no right or wrong answer. It's just really about exploring the different sounds that you like. And when you come across a, a standard, say Stella by Starlight or something like that, you're like, oh, you know, this chord is cool. Let me try another chord instead. You can just do it by feel and do it by being conscious that you, you are preserving some common notes in between the two chords. There will be a follow-up video for this, most likely, about how to reharmonize a part of a song or a progression, meaning like now you have four or five chords and you want to maintain the integrity of that so-called cadence, which will be, well, there's a function, like we want to go dominant to tonic, whatever. So there's means to achieve that with different effects, with choosing different chords, but we're not getting into that right now. Let's just focus on our top D note. So let's get going. I have that D note. And what I will be going through is thinking of the different bases it could have. So this E note could have a, a D bass, open D. It could have an E flat bass. I'm go going up in half steps, an E bass, an F bass, an F sharp, a G, right? I could do the entire chromatic scale with that top note as its melody. And now it does mean that this D in top note could be perceived as 12 different things relating it back, back to the root of the chord, the bass note of the chord. The chord is changing around the note, but the note is not. That's what I, I really like to do. It's like shifting the focus. And even then, earlier in the video, I, I did a C9, right? And then 
that's the ninth of the C. So C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Essentially, the D or the ninth is the second note of the scale, also labeled as the ninth, which is a, it's synonymous. Now it's an extension. But if I had C minor ninth, it would still be considered a ninth. So now you have 12 options to perceive this D note as the top note of your chord. And you have other options as far as a quality, like major or minor, is it a dominant, is it a this, is it a that? So what I like to do is just be super pedantic and systematic about doing the whole things, the whole deck of cards. And once I stumble upon something I like, I just write it down or I memorize it. I go, oh, this sounds pretty cool. So I'll show you some of my favorite options. Uh, this might go fast, so feel free to stop the video and I look at the chord diagram that should be on the screen here or here, right? It's gonna be much simpler if you take the time to digest this. So the D note as the tonic of the chord. Well, we have our good old classic D, you know, major chord or D minor, which you could play like that also. Right? Or minor would be with a D that I can't quite reach. Right? That's not even a seventh chord, it's just major or minor. Now let's go crazy. How about the D diminished? Ooh. Or B diminished, same thing. Wow, okay. How about a D7? Hmm, you know Cowboy D7? Still works. Okay, can we do a D minor seven? I think so. How about this? Okay, cool. Now let me go from a D to a C root, just because I feel like it. So I love the sound of C9. I love the sound of C minor nine also. But also, I love this major 6-9. So I don't know, I, I'm not counting, I'm not keeping a tally, but you know, already we have so many different chord qualities with that top note. Just to reiterate, if you were playing a standard and you were doing a chord to melody, all these chords would be good, or they could be passing chords. It could be stuff that you put in between. Even if it's not functionally good, you can have create chromatic movements within it. Now let's move on to an E. I think I, I like that. So an E, if I did an open E minor, I could have that note as the seventh of E. So now we have an E minor seventh, plain and simple. Now you're getting an idea of how you could put your fingers and just observe and, and keep using that top note. So how about um, an F, an F13 maybe? Ah, why not? A G, we talked about it. How about G minor now, G minor? Here's a bit of a, not a misnomer, but a, something that'd be more, more meaningful, more uh, creating mix up. How about we do an A flat? So it's a G sharp, A flat, minor seven, flat five. Where's the D note? It's right there. It's right there again. Now it could be called a C double sharp or a E double flat or whatever it is, but it's there. Okay, cool. Let's continue. How about an A minor? I do A minor seven like that, but I do, I use that that is an 11th, okay. How about an A-flat dominant 7? Sharp 11. Now we're playing the beginning of a one note sambo. Is that the song? Can't remember. Anyways, doesn't matter. Uh, how about um, an A dominant 7 sus? So it's a G major triad. This with an A bass. See? How about a B flat something? How about a B this? How about a, right? If we went through the entire thing and extrapolated all the options, some of them you'll be like, nah, I don't know. But some of them will be really interesting. And then that's where you can fall on what I call the category of like chord by chord substitution. You decide to change a quality. The first thing to do as you sign the beginning of the video is to go from a whatever to a minor or whatever. That's pretty simple. Uh, but then you can start to morph and move that bass note around and fi find chords that live in between the chords that may not exactly relate to the key, but this is so hands-on, it's so practical, is I love doing that because I don't really need to understand it. I don't really need to put a stamp of approval from uh, JS back or Mozart or whatever. It's like, look, it's just guitar, man. I just decided my fingers went there and that, that's the note. And now we did it with just a top note. But one other thing that would be interesting is to see some notes could move and some notes could stay the same. I'll give you one quick example of this. If I did a C sus, 
9. It's all this. So if I wanted to move two notes, the two middle notes, down half a fret, I would I would wind up being on a C6-9 that I showed you earlier, right? So I could go... And here's a cool little van. Now I can alternate the bass. Then I can start to add the top string. Whatever I'm doing. So I like to, to just look at a bunch of notes that are together. It's like, oh, that's a chord. And what if we changed just a bit of it and preserved the top note? What if we change the bottom? What if we did this? What if? And then we wind up in places uh, that is a, a territory, I believe, is explored by a lot of... Uh, really strong harmony player like Ed Bickert and uh, say Lenny Bro, even the, the late Wes and, and all these guys, uh, Julian Lage, uh, Gilad, which I love, of course. Uh, and these guys will just sort of by fingering, look at a thing and migrate it and it becomes part of a new tune or, or something. So this is the way to go about, uh, in my own opinion, whatever it's worth, that exploring chord substitutions does not have to be very scientific or thorough or being in the context of understanding what we're doing, it could just be a certain sound we appreciate. That's that's 10 minutes for me to tell you, like, play the stuff you like, man. Play the stuff you like. On that note, I will let you go, guys. Uh, please uh, like and subscribe this video. You can check out the channel for way, way more videos about standards, about songs, uh, about how to improvise and scales, etc. And I will see you soon on the blog portion of this uh, this website, which is jazzguitarlessons.net slash blog. Improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher. See you next time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.